I work with the CloudStack team in Citrix, and uh, I joined the team pretty recently, a few, like seven, seven or eight months ago. And before that, I was just pursuing my master's. So what I'll be presenting over here is something uh, we call Stactician, and it's modeled on uh, Amazon CloudFormation, which has been, uh, which has got quite a lot of traction and, and, and been quite famous in the Amazon EC2 world. So uh, here's a quick agenda of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, just introduce you to the whole tool that we have built, uh, a little bit of history around it, uh, how, how it was built, the implementation details. Uh, I'll, I'll try to fit in a quick demo as to how it's, what its current state is and where we want to, want to go next with it. So the introduction. Uh, obviously, a, a talk has to have a quick show of hands. So how many here know about Amazon CloudFormation? And how many folks have used Amazon CloudFormation? All right, so uh, for, for the benefit of others, uh, uh, Amazon Cloud Formation. It was created by uh, by Amazon when they realized that uh, in the EC2 world, most of the applications that they that they saw were being deployed on EC2 used to be a combination of various resources. You would have EC2 instances, maybe some kind of an S3 instance, a volume here and there, everything put inside in, uh, in, a, in a VPC. And typically, people would just keep uh, adding one resource after the other, configuring it right and then keeping building on top of it. Like, like let's say a VPC is your base, and then you create a subnet inside your VPC, create route tables, then add instances, add volumes. And they saw that pattern being repeated over and over again. And that's when they abstracted the whole uh, collection of resources inside the Amazon world uh, as, as being called a whole stack. And a stack is essentially whatever makes your whole application, and, and every resource is a, is a kind of an Amazon resource. Uh, more specifically, it, it started off being the Amazon EC2 resources, and they then uh, added, added other uh, things to it, like the Route 53 and, and the other services. So uh, what, in a sense, it is infrastructure as, as a code. You define your whole application or infrastructure in some kind of a readable file. Uh, it's, it's a JSON file in the Amazon world, and, and we, have, uh, we have kind of built on top of it as well. Uh, in the JSON file, you simply describe your resources. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, you, you typically would maybe start from a VPC uh, as, as your base resource and build on top of it. So there's some kind of a dependency that is, that is involved in your application. So you define the dependencies in, in the JSON file as well. And the, uh, the advantage over here becomes that a file, the, the, the JSON file is a, it's a simple text file. It becomes easy to read, review, Kind of, uh, it's parameterized so you can reuse it over and over again, and uh, that that makes it a pretty nifty tool to to have uh, at your disposal. So this is how a typical uh, typical Amazon Cloud Formation template would look like. The whole uh, JSON file which describes your whole application stack is termed as a template, and this is how it would typically look like. I'm not sure if you're able to see it very well because probably the resolution is. Yeah, okay, all right. So uh, you have some kind of a versioning system, uh, a quick description as to what your, what your uh, application is doing. And this is where most of the interesting part is. You define your parameters, give it the name, uh, give some metadata about the parameters, saying what kind of a parameter it is, a quick uh, user-friendly description so that people who are using your application can figure out what should go in there. and the, uh, the, the types of, of uh, your parameter. And then comes the interesting part about the resources. Now, the resources can be, uh, in the Amazon world, an EC2 instance, an EC2 security group, or uh, uh, in any of the EC2 resources that are supported by CloudFormation. And uh, so over here, you have, uh, this is really small, though. OK, so inside, inside a security group, Amazon allows you to provide the ingress and egress rules, and those are kind of defined here in the file, in the file itself. And uh, it's kind of parameterized uh, overall. So if you see this part over here, uh, it, it, it comes in from the parameter that is given in by the user. This, this makes the whole uh, template file reusable. And at the end, whenever your app is done, you, you typically would want some kind of an output 
from your application, and that's where the output tags come in. And this is how, this is the typical uh, anatomy of, of a uh, JSON um, Amazon CloudFormation template. So, what are the advantages of having having this tool? It gives you the ability to deploy applications in, use in a single click for multiple users, given that it's all parameterized. Uh, it's all readable code. It's all readable JSON, so it's it's very transparent, uh, easy to use. You can take the take available templates, modify it to, to suit your needs, and then and then uh, uh, use it for your own use, uh, needs. Uh, it it kind of eases the resource management and dependencies. As I said, inside the JSON file itself, you can define implicit and explicit dependencies, saying resource A explicitly depends on resource B, or there might be implicit uh, dependencies as well, wherein if you have a reference tag or something like that, which I'll, which I'll come to uh, in, in the next few slides. So you don't really have to worry about, uh, oh, did, he, did, did the person deploying my application follow the installation guide correctly? Did he create the VPC first and then created the subnet? Did he add the route tables or not? So those kind of things get automated in here and that dependency is taken care of uh, by the tool itself. Uh, it allows you to, to make atomic deployments. By atomic deployments, I mean that all the resources that, that form your application, they're either deployed in, in, uh, in its totality or nothing is deployed. It, it allows you the ability to, to roll back everything in case uh, uh, some kind of a failure occurs. So you don't have any dangling resources. You don't have to really go back, clean everything up, and then start, start all over again. The, the tool takes care of, of that for you. And in a sense, it allows you to migrate your existing business applications to the cloud using, using, uh, using some kind of a friendly tool. So that was uh, cloud formation. So what is Stacktation? It's, it's very simply put, uh, cloud formation for cloud stack. And uh, the name uh, was, was given by Chiridip. Uh, so it's, it's essentially a web interface for the template and stack management that I have been talking about. And, uh, it has a few components underneath that I'll, uh, that I'll uh, get to next. So a uh, little bit of the history. Uh, this, the, the whole uh, uh, Stactician uh, project was started by Chiradeep uh, sometime last year. He introduced it last year at the CCC as, as a prototype. Uh, the, uh, the, the main goal over there was trying to execute Amazon Cloud Formation templates on Cloud Stack as is. So the template, uh, Amazon currently publishes a lot of their templates for, let's say, a LAMP stack, the WordPress, uh, the Zen desktop applications, uh, uh, Redmine, and all those things, which are commonly used. I think, I don't know if they have Jira or something, but yeah, most commonly used uh, business tools. They have made uh, templates available uh, for it online. And uh, we started uh, this off as, as trying to execute those templates as is on Cloud Stack. Uh, so, we, we ran into a few issues as, while, while we were trying to do that, especially between uh, having very low fidelity between AWS and CloudStack type of resources, and that's how this whole project uh, started gaining traction, and uh, that's how Stactician came out to be as it is today. So uh, the architecture and implementation of StackMate. Uh, it has two components, uh, components in it. Uh, we call the first component StackMate. Uh, this is the main execution engine that, that drives uh, all the, the, the whole running of uh, cloud formation templates or from, from not, I'll just call it templates, the templates on top of cloud stack. And uh, obviously you need to have some kind of a nice web interface and an API layer on top of it so that users can interact, can monitor, can track everything that they're doing. So there is a, a web interface which is Tactician. And this essentially embeds the StackMate component underneath. So both of them are available as, as separate components, but uh, Stactician is, is the one which has the nice graphical UI and, and it provides a seamless integration with, with StackMate. Uh, the reason why we kept both of them separate was because uh, sometimes people like to work more with the command line tools, try to try things out by, by themselves uh, in, in a really quick manner without having to install a server, having, having no database to work with. And uh, just for quick prototyping, or, or if you want to write your own web interface on top of, uh, on top of StackMeet, then it, it allows you to do that. Uh, the whole thing is written in Ruby, and Stactician runs uh, a Rails server. So a quick overview of StackMeet. So whatever was defined in your JSON template, uh, which is your stack definition, 
we treat that simply as a workflow. A workflow meaning uh, it has a directed acyclic graph. Uh, you have a start node, you have some kind of dependencies which are resolved in a, in a, in a graph structure, and then you just traverse the graph in, in a topological order, and then you execute every single, whatever is there in every single node of the graph. Every single node of the graph contains uh, the exact description of the resource, contains the metadata parameters, contains everything you need to create that particular resource on cloud stack. So uh, once, you, once you abstract it out, uh, abstract it out as a simple workflow, it kind of makes your life easier to, to add more things into it and in terms of plugins uh, going forward. Uh, as I said, once you have the uh, directed acyclic graph defined, you just execute the workflow, make, keep uh, making the relevant cloud stack API calls. Let's say you have a resource which is defined as a cloud stack virtual machine, which is the equivalent of Amazon EC2 instance. Uh, you just create an API call to cloud stack which says start virtual machine or, or stop virtual machine as, what, as the appropriate call may be. Uh, as I said, this is the core uh, engine for, for running the whole stack and, and deploying the resources. It does most of the heavy lifting in, in terms of uh, uh, trying to figure out what the relevant API call is, making the API call to the cloud stack server, uh, polling for the job status, and, and uh, trying to figure out if it, uh, if it errored or not, if it was successful, if it errored out, what was the reason of the error, should you be rolling back or not. All those things are, are embedded into Stackmate. Uh, and it has a thin command line tool available to uh, allow you to get, get up to speed uh, very, very easily. So what is Stactician? When, when you have something like a command line tool, it's good to work with, but the real power comes from having a, a web interface and an API layer so that people can interact with it. Uh, typically, you would want to have a database layer for, for persistence and trying to track what happened to your resources. You probably just launched your stack and came back a few days few days later and then you want to figure out what happened. Where did it go wrong? Did it, go, uh, did it complete or not? So uh, Stactician provides that kind of, uh, uh, that kind of power uh, on top of Stackmate. To uh, interact with Stackmate, it uses some uh, Ruby metaprogramming techniques. Uh, this is because uh, Stackmate was, is, is defined or, uh, as a, it's, it's, a, it's defined as a standalone tool, so it has uh, no database capabilities or no tracking capabilities, and, and uh, the way that the uh, engines we use inside Stackmate, which is called as a root engine for workflow management, uh, to, to embed some kind of core into it for database management, it uses some Ruby metaprogramming techniques to interface. So uh, where we were at the last time, uh, when, when Chiradeep had introduced it, uh, we were able to resolve very complex uh, dependencies inside the template, both implicit and explicit dependencies. Uh, so to make the template reusable, uh, you need some kind of, let's say you take some kind of inputs from the user. You need, uh, you need an ab ability to manipulate those parameters, maybe create strings out of it, maybe create hash maps out of it or, or, or some kind of a thing. Uh, Amazon provides that ability using something called as intrinsic functions. The intrinsic functions allow you to uh, base and code your, your data so that it can be sent to the virtual machine using APIs or, or it can allow you to look up in some kind of a hash map defined somewhere else or it allows you the, the ability to refer to any parameter of any other resource that was previously created. And that is what I mean by implicit dependencies. Let's say you have a resource which is, uh, which is a type of cloud stack network. A cloud stack network typically resides inside a VPC. And let's say for, for the network, you need to know what the uh, CIDR for the VPC that you created was, and that was defined on the fly. So those kind of references are possible using intrinsic functions, and that gives you uh, a real ability to kind of make it uh, a very dynamic application and, and allow the user to configure it in a way that, that suits their needs. Uh, we had the, the weight conditions were, were implemented the last time we, we spoke about it. Weight conditions are a really, really useful uh, kind of resource to have. So uh, this, this comes in handy when, let's say, you're building some kind of an application which has, let's say, a database and a web server. Now, typically, you don't want the web server to be, to be running without the database because then there's no, nothing to talk to, and then you typically, I mean, there would be some kind of an error condition that would, that would come up. So let's say you're trying to deploy that application using, using CloudFormation. 
and you have one resource which creates some kind of a virtual machine and installs MySQL on top of it, but then you don't want the, the web server to, to be uh, started unless the database is started uh, first. So eight conditions allow you to provide that kind of synchroni synchronization mechanism using uh, Stactician or, uh, and, and the templates. So a typical way to use it would be to define a wait condition on your MySQL server. And when the MySQL server is up, it would send a signal back to Stactician. And then Stactician knows, oh, now I can go ahead and, and start provisioning the web server so that uh, the dependency is maintained and, and uh, the user's uh, view that I don't, uh, the user's ability to control when the web server exactly comes up is, is provided by uh, this kind of wait condition. So uh, it's, it's very handy, and uh, most of the applications or most of the templates that uh, we wrote for our initial prototyping and folks that have used Stactician have written, they use wait conditions uh, really, really heavily to manage that kind of synchronization mechanism across resources. Uh, and the last time that, that this was uh, introduced, we were able to create uh, simple resources like AWS Instance and AWS Security Groups. And uh, we wanted to go ahead and, and create more complex resources inside, inside CloudStack. So uh, we started on that path, trying to, uh, trying to execute AWS templates on CloudStack. Uh, simple resources like Instances, Security Groups, they kind of uh, work well, even volumes, they, they, they work well on CloudStack because uh, both have really uh, 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 very similar notions and very, very similar semantics uh, as such. And logically, they turn out to be more or less the same. But when you go to more complex resources, which you see in, in real life, like VPCs, subnets, and then that's where real applications kind of come in, and then they use these kind of concepts really heavily. Uh, you have, we found that you have many differences between the AWS definitions and, and CloudStack definitions that really hampered our ability to execute AWS templates as is on, cloud, on, on CloudStack using Stactician. Uh, for example, you don't have any route tables in CloudStack, but the AWS uh, CloudFormation templates would kind of define those and we would either throw it off or we would not know how, what to do about it. Uh, sometimes there would be semantic differences between, between APIs. So as I said, uh, the, the main goal is trying to execute the corresponding API calls on CloudStack. And given that there were semantic differences, uh, for example, CloudStack takes in a map parameter as, as an API parameter, which is kind of defined as map.keys something, and map.value is its value. Uh, AWS does not really have something like that, so you would have differences between parameters and given that those parameters are defined in the JSON file itself, there was additional logic being put in the StackMate uh, engine to try and uh, convert it into a format that CloudStack would understand. And that got really messy wherein uh, sometimes it would uh, map to a map parameter, sometimes it would map to a UUID or something like that, and then that kind of management became really, uh, really complex. So all in all, uh, uh, the dependency resolution became uh, really complex as well. Sometimes two resources in AWS would, come, would, would, uh, would become a single resource in CloudStack. In that case, we would try and figure out uh, it's a resource like DHCP options, which in CloudStack does not exist. It's, it's inside, defined inside the VPC itself. So what do you do? You just pass it through. But then the parameters defined inside the DHCP options are useful inside VPC, so you kind of then keep a tracking and, and, and try to go back and figure out what was written over there so that the user's view of, of the parameters is, uh, is intact. Uh, so given, given all of this, uh, there were too many workarounds. It kind of became hacky to execute the cloud formation templates as is, which is when we decided to create our own cloud stack namespace. So, you do not map from AWS namespace, let's say AWS EC2 instance to CloudStack virtual machine instance. You don't do that kind of mapping anymore. You, you simply create a uh, CloudStack specific template, a JSON file, which is more or less, if you have a, a AWS template already available, it would be more or less modeling on top of it. Uh, the, most of the changes would be in terms of defining the type of resource, defining the parameters, right? But uh, the main skeleton can be, can be taken as is. And that was one of the goals when we started off writing Stactician, that given that there are a bunch of templates already available, should make it easier for the users to kind of 
write it for cloud stack as well or migrate to cloud stack as well you don't want them to spend a few a few weeks just trying to figure out how to write it from scratch given that you have your own cloud stack namespace it allows us the ability to validate the api parameters uh, given that we know in cloud stack certain parameters are required in apis we can we can fail early and not go ahead and create those resources at all and then just roll back the stack and and uh, uh, start from uh, start from ground zero for the user and uh, internally the way it works is that every single cloud stack resource uh, becomes a participant in our definition the participant is submitted to the workflow uh, the workflow engine uh, essentially just again as i said executes the directed acyclic graph and what what is to be done inside that particular vertex of of the graph is defined by the participant uh, abstraction and uh, to to kind of uh, create deploy applications and roll back applications you need create and delete api calls and that's that's more or less uh, the the minimum requirements so it was it was nice and fine we go, went ahead with the cloud stack namespace but uh, to to make sure that it works across different versions of cloud stacks a few small details that change in cloud stack between versions let's say uh, an api gets added you need you you don't want to just go back to your whole stackmate engine and make changes to the code because then with different versions of cloud stack you have to maintain too many different versions of 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 stackmate as well and somebody has to just go ahead and and keep changing the code uh in cloud stack uh, you see that new resources get added pretty frequently more people come in they define their own plugins and and uh, so it it kind of became uh, difficult to manage it uh the advantage is that cloud stack has this uh, api discovery module so you kind of get the, the information about the api from a cloud stack in, running cloud stack instance so we use that to generate the whole code base for the stackmate engine so you have some kind of rake task defined and they just essentially generate all the 51 different resources that are supported inside the uh, stacktation on the fly uh using whatever instance of cloud stack you are running so it becomes easy to manage the manage the whole code base for errors and rollback as i mentioned uh, typically you want the stack creation to be atomic so that uh, users don't really have to worry about uh, cleaning everything up uh so it's it's it was uh, so given that we had defined a acyclic graph and and defined a topological order implementing rollbacks was pretty straight forward you just execute the resources the delete api of the resources in the reverse order you have the topology defined you go back execute in the reverse order and skip any resources that were not created at all one of the biggest additions we had was the uh, metadata server this is again like the wait condition a really really useful thing uh let's say you want to deploy an application like hadoop and that is uh, the configuration the name node and the data node in hadoop are managed let's say using puppet uh typically you would want the puppet uh, recipe you'd set up a puppet master let's say and you want the puppet recipes to be populated on the puppet master in some dynamic way so the metadata server running inside allows you to do that kind of management in in a in a really dynamic way uh i'll, I'll just show a, a quick example as to how the how the uh, definition would work you over here you are trying to create a database and all these parameters db username password db name they all come from the user uh, uh, in in the parameters and this is exposed as an as an api wherein everything gets resolved uh, to the actual values that the user provided so this makes the templates really reusable and the metadata is exposed as an api so that let's say there is a virtual machine that is going to act as your mysql server it can just make the api call figure out what the uh, username the password should be as defined by the user and deploy the database for you or deploy the puppet recipe for you uh, uh, as 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 uh, as created by the user um so the metadata server inside uh, stackmate is is embedded as i said stackmate is not a real web application so it does not have a database to persist it's all in memory and we embed a sinatra server to go ahead uh in stacktation we actually persist it in a database so that uh it can be it can be reused and and it kind of helps you with with the logging and uh, even if the server goes down whenever whenever the stackation server will come up again it has a 
uh, recovery uh, recovery system built into it so that it would start executing the stack from where it had left off even after the, uh, the web server or the database server has crashed. Um, for Stactation, we had a few scaling improvements that were done as well. Uh, Ruby MRI, all of this was implemented in Ruby. Ruby MLI has this global interpreter log, which kind of serialized everything while trying to deploy stacks. So we ran it inside a JRuby container, tried to make uh, async jobs uh, easier to manage using some kind of thread pooling mechanism. Uh, so kind of taking it one level closer to making it actual an actual production application. Uh, deletion of stacks is something that, that we are trying to implement as well. Uh, you have a stack deployed and now you're done. Let's say the user goes away or it was a test application, you no longer need it. You want an ability to delete it. Uh, it kind of works in Stactation, but uh, it's not fully tested yet. So, so I have not, uh, it's in my private repo as of now. Uh, in Stackmate, it is, it is currently in progress given that we don't have the resource IDs uh, saved in, a, in Stackmate because of lack of a database. Uh, it's still it's still in progress. There are some some things being worked out. Uh, in, in the interest of time, uh, I'll I'll just show the enhancements. Uh, so what we want to actually go to is currently it supports Cloud Stack and a few resources on AWS. Given the uh, uh, given that it has some kind of a plugin architecture and everything is essentially a workflow, we want the ability. We want to provide the ability wherein one resource could be created on Cloud Stack, another resource could be created on, let's say, Google Compute Engine, a third resource on AWS, and you have a way to, to manage those dependencies and using wait conditions and metadata server provide synchronization between them across clouds. What we need for that is uh, somebody to write the participants for GCE and AWS. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's, that's what we hope somebody from the community going forward would, would contribute as well. Um, a few more enhancements like providing nested stacks, treating stats as, as, as uh, first class objects is something that is, uh, that, that is also good to have. And uh, I'm not sure how much time we have. No, we're done. Okay, so. Uh, so uh, basically the whole Stactation tool has, has an API layer. It has a RESTful API available. Uh, we have created some kind of a small client uh, which, which exists. So you have things like, uh, I'm in the wrong folder. You have things like Stackmate, create stack, execute stack, list stacks, create templates that allow you to interact with the API in, in a really easy way. And uh, given that it's an API layer, it's easy to integrate that uh, as well. All of this is uh, available on, on GitHub, the link that I've provided over here. And uh, it's, it's all the setup instructions are, are uh, out there, so do try it out. If you see any issues, do feel free to log them on GitHub and we'll try to resolve them as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, that, that gets us to Q&A. Thank you. Any, any questions, comments? Sure. Yeah. Can you, can you repeat the question? So, uh, I'll, I'll repeat the question. Uh, the question here was, are there any plans to uh, incubate this or, or integrate this with the uh, Cloud Stack uh, project as such, like uh, op uh, OpenStack has OpenStack Heat, which is the equivalent? Uh, as of now, no. This is currently a, a separate project uh, on, on GitHub. And uh, as of now, there has not been any discussion. Maybe if we have enough user traction, we can, we can kind of drive that uh, forward. So yeah, so I'll make a, a comment there. Um, so for example, CloudStack has a CLI, CloudMonkey, and CloudMonkey uh, is part of the Apache CloudStack project. It's a separate repo, and we do uh, separate releases than the CloudStack source code. So potentially, Stackmate could you know be donated because I think we would need to donate, or I mean, I'm not sure exactly how the process, what the process would be, but we could do that. Or you know the easiest is probably to keep it on GitHub and then uh, put it under the Cloud Stack X dash Extra organization and uh, have it there. Like uh, we know we we're gonna do the same with the AWS interface, the GCE interface, 
I was mentioning the slipstream connector, maybe you might get there. That's where we have the knife cloud stack module. Um, so it's separate from the pure cl uh, cloud stack source code. So we don't really have a need to push it in the, in the main release. Okay, I encourage you to uh, find Amog uh, outside maybe, and he can give you demos uh, of uh, Stacticians. Thanks sure. again, Amog. Thank, thank you.